Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I achieve the Rastafarian hair plus the woolen hat and the skin tone. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. It's only a small study this one, it's a 4 inch by 4 inch, so I'm just making a centre point on my board and I'll put a centre point on my reference image, because I'm doing this freehand. So I'm using a Carbofello 708 and very lightly putting some marks in to start with, keeping my hand quite a distance away from that point to keep all the marks nice and loose. Basically I'm, I'm working on imaginary hang angles so just using the edge of that 4 inch square as well act as like a grid if you like, just a one square grid. So I'm using the edge to find the actual uh, shapes as well uh, and also working from that centre point um, and using angles and comparing one measurement with the other. Just quickly going through this uh, outline, I've got plenty of videos in my channel that go into quite a lot of details on how I do outline freehand, so if you want to check those out, please do. Uh, but basically, just sort of keep it loose, not too much detail, just, just suggestions of where things go. I have a selection of pencils I'm using for the underdrawing. Just using the Carbothello white just to get a basic idea where the uh, lighter areas are first. Just roughly putting this in. This is going to be quite a loose study, not so detailed as I normally do. It's just um, experimenting to see how loose I can go with this. Um, but I'm putting like brown and blue for the shadows rather than using black for the underdrawing, and then work it in burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue which creates subtle greys as well and then what I'll do then is work in a bit of yellow ochre so basically what you're doing then is using like a primary colour yellow ochre burnt sienna ultramarine blue then you're using a bit of brown as well and blue to create the sort of darker areas Right, with this study I've actually added a little bit of black as well, just put that in. Sometimes you just go with it, you know, I've just got the instinct just to put a little bit of black in to start with. Normally I wouldn't do that, uh, just usually brown and blue, but because they really, uh, it is a really dense black there, just add a little bit of black. Now what I tend to do is keep the reference image quite small so I can see the whole thing and just be very loose with the marks. Um, it starts big, big shapes, and then it gets smaller and smaller as you get more and more detail, so you get more and more refined. Just using the olive green for the grass there for a moment, but I'll put lemon yellow and all sorts of things with that later. Um, but like I say, it's just a case of just getting everything in position. Now, just putting the skin tone in now, just using the yellow oak to start with. Uh, just using the white, the Carbothello white, just to highlight certain areas. Glazing with that warm red, yellow ochre, and then just adding a bit of dark green there, just to desaturate, just for the area of the shadows there, just to give an idea of where they are. Now just building these layers up slowly, so adding more and more richer colour. Um, so I'm just using that warm red, mixing a little bit of yellow ochre in there. Using these chalkier pencils will make it easier than when you start putting the richer colours on with the Caran d'Ache pencils. Just reduces the tooth of the actual pastel mat. Um, so it makes it sort of glide more when you start putting these richer colours on. Using burnt sienna now, just to warm things up. Now for the underdrawing of the hat, just basically getting everything in position, just getting an idea of some sort of colour in there. For that darker green, I'm using a bit of uh, cold red with that to get the shadow. Uh, positioning 
where the actual texture of the knitted fabric just put in sort of some lines in there just an idea and it's just getting things in position ready for the rich colors right so now i'm starting to add those richer colors which is richer in pigment they're sort of really vibrant and sort of dense with the colors um this is actual the Caran Dash black I'm using but I'm mixing a bit of colour with it so I used a bit of ultramarine blue and sort of Lysian crimson there uh, just to create purple and mixing that with the black just to create that sort of depth I needed in that shadow area now the rich colour stage I'm aware of the values the chroma and also the temperature of certain things so some shadows are colder and some are warmer. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Right, just showing you how I'm using the Canon Dash. This is actually flesh tint, 5%. I'm putting down, it's like a yellow ochre mix, and then I'll glaze over then with a burnt sienna and ultramarine now this is the basic under sort of painting of the rich color really you're just building up this texture and then i'll put details on this later which you'll see in the video what i'm doing is being aware of everything while i'm painting so even though i'm just drawing this i'm aware of the energy of the character of the person and uh, feeling that just open my heart let go of the mind and just flow with it and just let your instincts take you to where you want to go so one minute you might be doing one part and then you just go over to doing a totally different part you just let that instincts guide you really now put the whitest white in there by using the rembrandt stick putting that in uh, so i'm establishing now the whitest white darkest dark and then I can really focus on getting the chroma right now there's a selection of Karen Dash pencils from flesh color tones and the dark brown and black for the deep shadows in the hair right it's time to block in the chroma now and the rich colors of the skin so I'm blocking everything in uh, this is like the second stage you see you've got your first stage which is your outline and underdrawing now this is blocking in with the rich colors then the details will be later on in the video but what I'm doing is just getting a, a basic idea of what the value is the chroma and then all the details then will be put on later so I'm using yellow ochre burnt sienna and I use dark green as well to desaturate that burnt sienna and sometimes brown if it's needed. So basically it's just preparing everything again for the detail stage. So I'm just getting everything sort of feeling right and the correct sort of colour, value and chroma. Now I'm moving my pencil in circles, squiggles, just to create different layers of texture. So the more you keep putting on, the more it gets more subtle and more refined. Like I say, this is a, like a more of a looser drawing. I can go more and more in detail on this. Normally I would do, uh, but I'll go, you'll see how far I'll go later on with the detail. Just try and keep a looser feel to it. Just trying something different. Now for dark skin, I tend to use like burnt umber, which is a dark brown, and burnt sienna and yellow ochre together, which creates quite nice golden brown colours, especially the burnt sienna and yellow ochre together. Now I'm working on several areas at the same time, just making sure that I get a sort of balance to the actual tones of it before I start getting in there with the detail so it's just a case of just sort of feeling your way through just keep open your heart let go of the mind and just let these sort of movements flow from you and and just express yourself uh, through instinct rather than thinking about where the details are when I get to the detail stage I do slow down and focus more on the details but again it's still not a thought process it's slowed down uh, and more sort of a focused feel of where they are 
uh, but it's still not intensely thinking about it. Right, slowing it down to real time now, so you can just see how I'm putting these sort of subtleties into the actual hair now, into the dreads. It's just a matter of just sort of, again, feeling your way through. Uh, I'm using a white here, but what I'll do is I'll glaze over with certain colours to subtle that white up, so that white shines through the glaze then. Now, rather than using black, I'm using blue and burnt sienna to create subtle greys, so you can have warmer greys by using more burnt sienna, and then colder greys by using more blue. Um, so it creates that sort of subtlety, because as, as you look at the reference image, there's blues in there, purples, there's all sorts of different shades in there. Just refining the details now of the flesh tone, uh, by adding that sort of stubble in there using the burnt umber and burnt sienna just letting the texture just happen and it sounds a strange expression but if you just focus your heart let go of the mind like I keep mentioning and just let your movements flow from you and you'll find that you'll just the, the details just take care of themselves they just happen the more you can let go of the mind, because the mind likes to control, but if, if you want that sort of freedom and uh, the joy of it, just expressing it, is just let go of that mind and just focus on letting the, the heart guide the mind rather than the mind taking control. The heart is, is like guiding the way just like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons. I really appreciate the support every month. It means the world to me. I can't thank you enough. If you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below. Right, just slowing it down to real time now so you can see how I'm putting this texture in and the details. Just using the Carbothello white, just very, very lightly, varying the pressure as well, putting more pressure on where it's lighter, less where it's like light grey. Now with the burnt sienna, I'm using the pencil in different directions and just really feeling my way through, just letting me hands move where it needs to go. Just instinct really, just observing the picture and just letting these movements happen and very, very lightly just changing the subtlety of these colours. Now using yellow ochre as well, so I'm varying the pressure to change the actual colour of what's underneath, so I'm adding that yellow to make it a little bit greenier on the actual bluey grey. So you keep changing up and varying the pressure of these pencils and you keep changing the colours. What you're doing, you're mixing the primaries over the basic sort of structure of colour you've put underneath. So you're actually mixing on the board, if you like. I realised at this point that I needed to get the hat done uh, first before I can really feel and see the subtleties correct. So sometimes you have to work on certain areas to get them colours right and then you create that wholeness what you're looking for. On with the hat then, so these are the colours I've selected uh, to actually create this texture of the wall. Now initially when I do the rich colour stage I see it as a blocking so basically all I'm interested in at this point is to get the value something like and also the chroma so I'm building up that sort of base feel to it and getting that sort of chroma right I'm using some sticks now from Rembrandt range just to put that vibrancy in there just to get that sort of extra kick to the actual sort of vibrancy of it and then just mixing the other pencils over the top of it and just basically getting a feel for it. Now the best thing to do when you're doing a knitted fabric is to try and find a pattern of the stitching. 
So what you're doing is just blocking in the shapes you see. So you're just making lines, do guidelines, and then then what you do then you subtle up then. So as soon as you've got those guidelines, you can start using your your lemon yellow and your burnt sienna to shape things up. Now I'm using a purple here because the complementary colour of yellow is purple, which is create subtle shadows. So I'm using that to desaturate and put the shadows in and then just using again Rembrandt stinks here and there just to create that vibrancy in certain areas. I will be adding more detail to this later on in the video but again when you first start the rich colours it's just a blocking just to get the value and the chroma in place. Now onto the hat so just putting guidelines in to start with this is just a again a, a blocking stage of the rich colours so I'm just placing some sort of colour in there, some texture and at the end of the video I'll be putting loads of detail in this to subtly it all up but I just needed that colour in there so I can start putting the detail in the hair and be more accurate with it. If you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. Right, so just focusing now on just putting the odd detail in here and there and then just keep glazing. So you're putting the light colour on and glazing. Just slowing it down to real time on this section here just so you can have a closer look at what I'm doing. Just very small marks, just swiggles, twisting that point just to get that highlight where you need it. And just feel your way, like I mentioned this is a loose study so I'm just sort of randomly putting these marks in and just getting that feel for it, just open up to the reference image and just let your hands move where they need to go. Right, slowing it down again to real time for you so you can see how I'm putting the final details in the skin tone there. Just using them Caran d'Ache flesh tint pencils and just small marks here and there, just building the way, you're building that texture underneath the skin and then you just glaze over the top then with lemon yellow, burnt sienna and using a uh, green for desaturating in certain areas if you need it. Now for the hat, um, for the final details, just using that white again, glaze over with the ultramarine blue and desaturate it with an orange which is the complementary colour and then I'm using a, a grey colour which is a very similar colour for the details here and there and then just glaze to subtle that colour up. Here's a look at the study at the correct angle. If you're interested in seeing more of my work please check out these links here.